Good day, everybody. Welcome back to Phase One Film, where, as always, the hair might be. F huh, hallelujah. But the reviews still aren't, and neither are my opinions. Today, we're going to be just doing a simple loadout video, which includes my full HVZ loadout, as well as anything additional that I need to add. Starting off with my primary, this is a modified Nerf Strife, which is known as Project Tesseract, and obviously it's a Strife because Flywheel Master Race, I'm not a Springer Peasant, I only use Flywheel Blasters. If you were to give me a Springer Blaster, I would make it into a Flywheel Blaster by the end of the day. That's a guarantee, I refuse to use Springers as my primary, but if we start up at the front, you can see there's no end strike barrel lug, even though there really should be one there, and technically there is one there. If you were to take this piece off, there's an end strike barrel lug hidden in there, but it doesn't look nearly as tactical without this piece on there, so all things considered, there basically isn't an end strike barrel lug, and that's a really big problem. The kit that I have is a Worker Chris Vector kit, which includes Picatinny rails on the top and on the bottom. You can mount an iron sight up here, or if you live in Australia, you can put the iron sight down there as it should be. If you want to make this thing into a sniper, you could put the bipod up here, or if you live in America, you could put the bipod down there. Either way works just fine, it still is a strife anyways. Um, as you can see, it has a regular strife grip, which is obviously very comfortable. It also has a Bobo Lolo style rev trigger in here, which is substantially more uh, usable and comfortable than the original strife trigger. And then as for the regular trigger, it has been lubricated heavily so that it feels really, really good. If we move on to the magazine release, you can see that it is a worker swordfish style magazine release, which I especially like because it's painted clear and is a little bit longer than the original Stripes mag release and a lot more snappy and springy than the original Stripes mag release. I think it feels really good to push this in and it's a lot more responsive than the original Stripes mag release. And now on to the internals. This blaster has a worker metal flywheel cage v3 it is using incitanto flywheels and fang revamps for the motors um, it is also using 16 gauge wiring a 21 amp omeron micro switch for the rev trigger which explains why it's so clicky and is running off of a 2s lipo obviously because 3s lipos with fang revamps would just cook this blaster if we move down to my waist, we've got my secondary, which is which is the uh, it's the El Lobo hammer shot build. This is also my custom design. Not quite as nice as the Tesseract, but still pretty good. It is a simple hammer shot mod with the ARs removed, with the dart posts removed, and with a spring upgrade on the inside, as well as some added lubricant around the. Uh, moving parts to make it very clicky and very responsive. Uh, there aren't any darts in here and I don't want to risk breaking or damaging the plunger tube, so I'm not gonna dry fire it here, but hopefully you can still see it. I personally really like this front barrel attachment here. I think it looks very nice, even though it doesn't add an end strike barrel lug, so it's immediately garbage, but it'll do for right now until they make one that does have an end strike barrel attachment lug on the end. Either way, it is still a very nice blaster, and it is sat here in a drop leg holster, which is really the only viable solution to hold this thing comfortably, and that leads me on to my gear. Aside from the drop leg holster, I am wearing a vest rig with six Worker 22 round magazines, which have been partially painted clear. They only gave it one coat of clear, so that's why it's still like somewhat black. You can't quite see all the way through it, but you kind of can. It's not fully clear, which is what I would have preferred, but it does work. This vest rig holds six of them. I don't really like this setup. I would opt for a belt rig for these magazines better just because when you look down, they're just sort of in your face and you gotta like get them really in your face to get them out of the, uh, the vest rig. But it does work in high energy situations where you need to reload fast. This is, is really effective and easy to do that. Oh, I love this trigger so much, but yeah, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here. That is essentially my loadout. So, uh, let me know if you guys have any suggestions, anything you want to know, ask me questions, leave them in the comments. Did I run an Ultra Blaster? I, I will send you to Jesus.
I will send you to Jesus. I am primarily just modified this blaster because Supervisor sucks and the things that he make are terrible. So if he can't do things right, I'll do them myself. And as for these magazines, I personally really like them, not just because they are made incredibly nicely, but also because they cost exactly $14, giggity. So there's really nothing not to like about these magazines, aside from, of course, the fact that they are too big for this particular rig. But um, I like to pick and choose my battles. It is what it is, and so, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for this video. Let me know what you guys think of this loadout uh, in the comments below. As always, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't. This is Phase One Foam signing off. Thank you. Thank you.